real trackable progress as a guitar player can sometimes feel out of reach. There are so many things to learn. There are so many different places to focus. Where do you start? Etudes are small exercises that are primarily designed to build a technical skill or to help musicians overcome a technical challenge. However, they can also help you refine your musicianship as well as build solid study habits that generate real success. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Chris. Today you'll learn about etudes. Now you may have already heard this term, etudes. These are usually small practice pieces designed by professors or teachers to develop a specific technical capability. However, if you're not in music school or taking formal lessons, finding a resource for well-written etudes can be a bit of a challenge. Thankfully, Andy Timmons is on the planet. He just released a beautiful piece called Here Lies the Heart. That's the piece I played at the top. And while it's a gorgeous piece of music, it also represents a beautiful example of an etude. So I'm going to explain what an etude is and then catalog the various values that I think studying etudes bring. Then I'm going to show you how much potential this piece holds as a study. First and foremost, etudes build technical capability. Through repetition and practice, you build muscle memory and technical precision. Secondarily, they allow you the chance to build on your musicality. And what I mean by this is your sensitivity to playing music. Are you expressive? Can you bring the music to life and not just be playing the exercise? Finally, the study of etudes provides real solid learning cycles because you start with nothing, maybe a technical challenge, and you end with a piece that you can perform. And that cycle from challenge to performance provides you a repeatable process for success. Let's zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna look at Here Lies the Heart by Andy Timmons. This is a beautiful piece of music, but it stands as a great example of how an etude works. Um, so I've tabbed the entire piece out. That's on my Patreon page if you wanna grab the tabs there, um, there for you. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is break down the technical motif of the piece, the technique that the entire piece uses throughout uh, to find the real gold in this as, as an etude. Um, so let me play the first movement for you. It's basically the first four phrases. So that's our technical motif. As you can see, it's a single line played in various positions. The first thing I want to do is expose what's actually going on here. This song is in the key of D flat. Strange guitar key, but it's a beautiful key nonetheless. Um, and there's a chord progression that's happening here. That motif, as it moves around the neck, is actually outlining a chord progression. That chord progression is this. D flat, B flat minor, G flat, and A flat. So in relation to our key, D flat, this chord progression is often looked at as a one, six, four, five progression. And what that means basically is using the major scale of the key we're in, which is D flat here, we've built a chord off the first degree, the first note of the scale. B flat minor is the chord that's built off the sixth degree. G flat is built off the four. And A flat is built off the five. One, six, four, five. Now you can see in this song, um, he's not playing chords. We're outlining these chords with this technical motif. So what I want to do now is get into the technical proficiency part of an etude. And this is where the primary strength of the etude comes. You're going to be developing a new capability. So this motif is in relation to our D flat chord. And if you look at this from scale degrees, the notes we're playing are five, one, two, three. So in other words, if I just play a D flat major scale, the notes I'm playing here, G flat, D flat, E flat, F, are simply the, the fifth, the first, the second, and the third. So you can see this little phrase as five, one, two, three. Now the tricky thing here for guitar players is that the first note I'm playing isn't the root, it's the five. So 
this is the root of the chord I'm outlining. When we move it down here, it's the same relationship to the B flat um, minor chord. It's five, one, two, flat three this time, because this is a minor chord. When we go to the G flat chord, it's the same relation, five, one, two, three, and then the A flat, five, one, two, three. So as a technical capability, now we understand what it is, right? So no matter where we're moving it, we can see how it relates to the chord progression. So now as a technical capability, what we want to do is really get this under our fingers. So you're going to want to really sit down with this and really get it under your fingers, solve the picking problem, down, down, up, down. Maybe that's how you're going to pick it. However you pick it, you want to want to make it consistent. So a good way to do that is just to take the shape and the idea and just repeat it, maybe move it across the strings, right, and really get your, your uh, synchronization together. Right, really work on it so that the technical capability, that technical proficiency is built. Once you build your technical proficiency, you've mastered that technique that the etude is providing. The next thing you want to work on is musicality because I'm putting this into the context of a piece of music. So now what we want to build is some musicality and some sensitivity. We've got the technical part out of the way and here's a few examples of what I would do. Dynamics is first. So let me play the first four phrases with, with no dynamic uh, thoughtfulness at all. I'm just going to play everything at the same dynamic range. Sounds pretty cool because the piece is really cool. The technique is really cool. But if I was to say, let's start using some dynamics to really give the piece some breath, right? To give it some movement. I could simply do this. Play the first one at normal volume. Play the second phrase at a lower volume return to the uh, third phrase with normal volume, and then on that fourth phrase, play it soft again. So normal, soft, normal, soft. Here's what that sounds like. automatically, right off the bat, you can start to hear that it's got some breath to it, right? It rises and, and falls. The dynamics are, are applying some movement to the piece, right? This allows my audience, whoever that is, to start getting involved, to, to start really sort of trying to anticipate what might be happening next. After dynamics, the next thing you want to try to do is start to think about pace. In a piece like this that really is very free-flowing, you know, there's no metronome, there's no drums going, you can really, really pace this however you want to. So going with the dynamics and now adding pace in, I can start to move time around and really draw you in by playing things slower or faster. So I'm going to play the dynamics as well as start to move things around in time. subtle changes in time, playing things a little bit faster, maybe a little bit slower, along with the dynamics to start to build some musicality into the whole thing. Now the next thing I want to do here is use the sound of the guitar and my effects to really start to put some polish on it. So right now I've got a fairly dry tone. There's a little bit of reverb in there, but it's fairly clean. I'm on the front pickup. Let me show you the, the effects loop, um, the effects patch that I used um, at the top. So listen to the amount of um, reverb and delay in here. There's a lot of delay, you know, that repeat is going. And then there's that hall reverb that's really, really wide, really big. So now listen to the result of dynamics and pacing. And now I'm putting this nice little sort of wash of effects over the top of it. 
This is getting really close to being performance ready for me. starting to sound good and starting to have some movement and some breath to it. Okay, now I'm going to add in some, some tremolo here. Um, and we're really getting close. I'm starting to put the icing on the cake with musicality. I'm getting really sensitive to what I'm playing and I'm staying really, really connected to the phrases. I'm using dynamics. I'm using pace. I've got my effects. Now I'm going to throw in a little bit of uh, tremolo bar. We're really getting close here. Just using those dynamics, that pacing change, a decent amount of reverb, working on that vibrato. I'm really painting this into a song. I'm really turning it into a piece of music rather than just an exercise. Now that I've got that down, the next thing to do is to focus on start to finish. In other words, polish it up from the very beginning all the way through to the end so that it's actually a piece of music. And this is where the discipline and focus comes in. And this allows me as a guitar player, as a musician, to set up a solid study cycle where I begin with nothing but a challenge and takes me all the way to the end, which is I have a piece of music that I can perform. Okay, there you have it, etudes. While not the only thing you can be studying, having an etude that you're working on all the time provides you this success cycle where you go from not knowing something, having a technical deficiency or a challenge, all the way to being able to perform a piece of music that features that technique. This cycle builds you real musical success over and over again. I hope you've enjoyed this. Tabs for the full piece are on my Patreon page. Head on over there if you want to grab them. I hope you found this inspiring. I hope you found it helpful. Stay curious. I'll see you next time.